everybody and welcome back. This is part five of our uh, Airfix 172 scale new tool Vulcan build. So hopefully I'll be getting the intakes fitted in this video along with the wheelbase uh, and one or two other bits and pieces and getting the wing panels joined and hopefully some of those seams cleared up. So let's get over to the bench. We'll get those intakes fitted and hopefully get the wing panels sorted out uh, and all that filling done. So over to the bench ready to fit these intakes first of all. The first thing I've done with them since part four is just given them a once over with some Tamiya coarse polishing compound and that's just got rid of one or two areas of uh, grittiness in the paint. So you remember I said the reason I didn't want to paint these after assembly was because of the air swirling round in the intakes and the risk of getting graininess on the paint finish. And that's what's happened with this with uh, the touch up that I did on the milliput. Uh, but it's not bad, it's come out with some uh, coarse compound. I didn't want to use the fine or the finished compound because I don't want to put a gloss on these intakes. I want to keep them as a satin finish. Uh, and that coarse compound has just brought the matte paint up to a satin, so that's fine. In terms of fitting these, there is a slight difficulty with them in that when we put the engine faces on the back, uh, the inboard engine face uh, fouls on the Bombay bulkhead here. So what we have to do is just take off a flat on the inboard uh, engine there and it fits in fine once we've done that but the curvature just got in the way uh, of fitting it past this bulkhead here. These aren't glued in place yet I'll do that later on I just want to get the intakes in place and make sure that those faces are going to fit when we do that. So the first thing I need to do is get the paint off the mating surface of this intake and in this case I'm just going to scrape it off on the front edge here. <laughs> the front of this is going to be fared into the uh, forward edge of the wing anyway so we don't have to worry about taking the paint off and it's going to be camouflaged as well in my particular example. I may as well do the top surface while I've got this out before I come to fit it. So this is just taking the paint off. I don't want to thin it at all because that will leave a gap that will end up filling if we take too much plastic out. So just go in, make sure we're down to the bare plastic and through the primer the surface on the wing is clean anyway I haven't got any paint on that so that's good to go so I'm using some contact to professional for this uh, I want to make sure I get a really good bond of these intakes so the main contact that I want to get is here on this cradle and along the front edge and behind these little brackets which are just locating brackets just make sure I haven't got too much on there I don't want this oozing out onto the wing or into the intake I want that nice and flush along the front I don't want to be doing loads of sanding they're a great fit 
or I've done a fix. So again, I just want to take off the edge of this number two engine. So I'm just cutting the flange off really, where it butts up against the Bombay bulkhead. So just putting a flat on it like that. Just check the fit. So that goes in fine here. So again, just repeat what we did on the starboard side. I really like Contact a Professional. I think it's uh, a nice glue to use. And it's nice to apply as well with these little pin applicators. It's pretty accurate. This side needs a little bit of help because for some reason the lower intake slightly bowed and that's just opening the gap up slightly. So I'm just going to peg that. Just to hold it tight until the glue's set. I may as well put one on the other side as well just to make sure while it dries. The next thing I'm going to do is fit the main gear base which I built a while ago. So you remember that when I built these bays I built them in separate parts so that I could get the paint uh, in properly, get the airbrush into all the corners. So I just need to pop those sides together don't want loads of glue on these because I don't want it running out onto the paint finish so gently does it this was uh, Tamiya quick setting by the way and it is quick setting it's very good so again I want to take off the paint from the mating surfaces again. These are easy enough to clean up. I haven't got an awful lot of paint on these. See those uh, intakes are quite snug between the Bombay bulkhead and these wheel bays. I will reinforce these. I've just got some glue just to tack them in place but I don't want to get the glue again oozing out onto the paintwork that I've done. So once these have set as you can see I'm just gluing them into the corner in these brackets. So once they're set I'll just go around and put some bracing strip around the outside or rather on the inside of the part so that uh, it doesn't show and that'll just reinforce that uh, bond because with the weight of this model it'll be fairly heavy when it's finished obviously the weight will transfer through the undercarriage legs and onto this roof so it'll want to push it out if we don't get this glued in properly. And the same with this uh, front wheel bear here. I'll do that reinforcement now. So I'm going to be using some 0 0.04 by 0 0.08 strip. Uh, and that will just run along the visible joins here where I can get in. I don't want to go all the way along here because I don't want to obstruct these holes here which are for the gear, gear bay doors. Uh, so just a little piece along here will do. So 
So this brace here that I've just fitted is fixed to the uh, wing bottom and also the wheel bay bulkhead at the side here. So it's just strengthening the whole assembly. And we'll get another piece along this side as well. So those couple of little strips should go quite a long way to uh, supporting and reinforcing this join. So we shouldn't have the wheel bay coming apart on us once we've closed the wing up. Okay, so there. Okay, they're just confidence boosters really those pieces. And we'll do the nose gear bay roof. I'm actually going to do the same with this nose gear bay. Use uh, reinforcers. I mentioned in the last part about these holes here which Airfix would have us drill out and I made a mistake really I rushed too far ahead without reading the instructions silly me and it turns out that there's also a hole further up here for these pieces so these parts fit on the underside like that and there is a pin on these further forward uh, but the hole for those is underneath this spar and I've fitted this spar already and glued it without opening the hole up so rather than guess where that hole is because I can't see it at all now I can't shine a light behind it to check where it is all I've done is remove the pin from this piece that goes through the hole so I'm relying on the centre pin which is here and the pin at the back which goes through the extension to the engine exhaust. Uh, and they'll just line the part up and I'll just have to glue the front down uh, flush onto the side of the wing there. So it's not the end of the world but it's just to point out that uh, in not reading the instructions I missed drilling the correct holes for these parts. Okay so that's as much as I'm going to do with the lower wing for the time being. So I'll just put that to one side. Uh, that will have 20-24 hours to dry now and I'll come back to it tomorrow. In the meantime I want to get the upper wing panels glued together and they'll have time to dry for a similar for a similar length of time and these don't need an awful lot of work doing with them uh, but they do need the air brakes fitting so these are the air brake parts here and we get the option to have these extended air brakes which simply plug in to the uh, pins in the air brake bay but I want to have mine uh, retracted so I have fitted them already on the port side now they weren't a perfect fit and I'll just do the starboard side just to illustrate what I mean so we'll get the two parts first of all so these are the uh, closed air brakes you can see the opened ones here there are also some on the lower wing as well, just a single air brake. There's twin ones on top and a single one on the underside. And Airfix number these again. So we've got the one here which goes above engine 3 here. And number 4. So that's useful because the parts are very similar but the profiles are slightly different to fit with the curvature of the wing. 
problem I had with these were the the uh, set they sat too shallow in the uh, recess so they weren't flush with the wing surface I'm not sure that these will be the same I suspect they will be they're actually a much better fit than the starboard side they're pretty flush they're slightly proud but they'll sand down flush well, they're, they're all right strange I was quite expecting to have to shim those up so while the going's good and we've got them in the right place I'll just cement those into position so again we've got Tommy extra thin quick setting so I'll leave those to fully dry and then I'll sand them flush like I've done with this surface here Let's use some 4000 micro mesh just to finish that off this is the pair of air brakes on the port side that have been uh, glued up for probably over a week now so it's fine to sand them out they look when you look at these uh, air brakes from directly above they do look a bit ragged um, but I don't worry about that because it's kind of an optical uh, illusion really the best thing to check whether or not they're going to look right under paint before you paint them is just to hold them up to the light at a very shallow angle and you can see the uh, shape of the panel lines and whether or not they're consistent between the uh, air brake panel lines and the uh, panel lines on the rest of the aeroplane and when I do that I can see that the uh, air brakes are perfectly flush uh, and the panel lines are the same sort of size as the surrounding ones okay so this uh, upper wing panel is set up nicely now and I've just been along the join up here at the top with some sprue goo so that's just uh, styrene strip white styrene strip uh, mixed with some uh, Tamiya cement and that gives a nice solid filler to put in these joints and I'm just going to sand that down now just to make sure that I've got rid of this seam along the top the seam here at the back is filled or covered with the fin uh, and I just want to check the fit for that in a, in a moment but uh, I want to get this sprue goo off first of all so I'll sand that down I'm not going to do too much at the front here because I don't want to alter the shape of the curve of the fuselage here I want to wait and fill all this and sand it down once I've got the nose section fitted into place otherwise sanding it you might alter the shape of this circle uh, here and end up having to do some more filling so I'm just going to leave that off at the moment so I'm going in with some wet sand in here just to get rid of this sprue goo and hopefully get rid of the seams as well at the f at beginning when I'm getting the worst of this off or the majority of it off I can go side to side but once I start getting down to the underlying plastic I'll try and uh, I'll try to sand up the fuselage like that and the reason for that is the sanding from side to side across the joint like this you run the risk of creating uh, dips and hollows uh, and raised sections because you're just concentrating on a centimeter or so at a time so if you run the sander up and down like that a fairly stiff sanding stick like this you've got much less chance of creating those dips and hollows so we'll gently get rid of that sprue goo and hopefully we should be left with a 
completely clean join between these uh, upper wing panels. We have to be a bit careful up here where the thin front uh, starts, so that little flare there. We don't want to flatten that. Uh, and again, I won't deal with this seam here until I've got the rest of the fin in place. I'll do all that together and that'll just preserve the line of the fin from this extension here up onto the fin part itself. You can see it thinning out now. And it's interesting at the front where I've sanded it, you might be able to see here We've just got that sprue goo left in here and that's one of the sink marks on the forward fuselage and it's caused by this tab here on the underside. So uh, we'll get rid of those with this sanding stick and the sprue goo. Of course you can use ordinary model filler, just as uh, good probably. But I wouldn't use what I call a dry filler uh, for this application, particularly shallow sink marks like that. You need something with something that's going to bite into the plastic. So Milliput, for example, doesn't do that. It's just uh, a filler which sits on the surface. And there's a chance it might just crack out of that with the handling and so on. I know I've used it for the intakes but once they're in place, they're not going to be touched. This will still get a bit of handling. Uh, so milliput might not work on these sink marks. So I'm going to carry on with this sanding, get the sprue goo off and get this join nice and smooth. And then I'll cut the fin parts out and see what we've got to do further back on this fuselage. As we're sanding this, we can see something interesting on the molding on this kit. I've started to take the sprue goo down on this joint here uh, and I've been doing it backwards and forwards uh, to make sure that it's nice and level and we can see that the filler has come away on this side down to this point and on this side uh, further forward which means that there are unequal ripples on the top of this spine. Uh, I thought when I had to put so much filler on that I'd misaligned the fuselage parts, I'd misaligned these two wing halves. But actually the way that that filler's coming off just shows that it wouldn't be possible to align it anywhere just because the parts don't match up. If I'd have misaligned them and the parts fitted perfectly I would have had a step all the way on one side and the filler would have worn away uh, on the other. But the fact that I've got uh, wear away here on one side and wear away here uh, on the other side shows that the parts don't match up, which is a bit disappointing really. And this needs quite a bit of work to get it up to scratch. It's perfectly uh, doable uh, and it doesn't take that long really, maybe 15-20 minutes. Uh, but the fact that this is a brand new moulding uh, on a newly engineered kit, uh, I don't think we should be having to do this sort of work on it. Okay, so I've uh, sanded most of that sprue goo off and I was just left with some curious uh, gaps in it. Uh, after I'd sanded it. So I've just gone in and filled that with some Mr. White putty uh, which is again it's uh, the type of filler which burns into the plastic so you get a really solid uh, joint. It's not going to pull out, it's not going to crack. So I'm just going to leave that to dry for a bit before I come back and sand it. Uh, in the meantime, I need to prepare the fin because I want to check the fit of the fin onto the top uh, wing panels. Okay, so I've got the fin parts cut off now. And I've also taken off the fin tip that I need for my model. This has got the uh, air warning radar in it. These were fitted 
uh, to most aircraft from about 1975 or by 1975. Uh, Airfix also provide the original smooth fin tip here as an option. Uh, but I obviously need this one. So I'll just uh, clean the fin up and glue it together and we can just check how it fits with the upper wing panels that uh, we've got drying at the moment. When I'm uh, putting together a part like this where we've got the sprue gate here, uh, I'll take that off after we've assembled the part. It's just easier to clean up, providing it doesn't alter the uh, fit or interfere with the fit of the parts, which I don't think this will. As long as you can join it together there at the front, let that set up and then it's easier to get the correct shape when we file that uh, sprue gate off. There's a danger if you do it before the parts assembled that you actually go a bit too far and damage the top surface of the fin in this case. Just much easier to clean up. So let's uh, get that together. That's a nice fit, obviously we've got the rudder to fit, um, but the actual radar housing on the fin tip goes on nicely. So we'll just take a look how this goes on to the uh, upper wing section. It's a snug fit. So that's not going to go in, it's too tight without any sort of modification. And I don't want to force it because that will tend to push the uh, assembly open again. I want a snug fit but uh, that's going to, that's too tight, it's nowhere near going in. So we're going to have to put some uh, material off the sides of these tabs. So I'll just gradually scrape some off. And just be careful to do it both sides so that we equalize the fit on both sides. So that's a fraction taken off, we'll see how that goes. It's going to need a bit more. It's starting to get somewhere near. It's still too much. This is quite a lot of material I've taken off here now. I'll just concentrate on that front tab first of all. There will come a point when it gets very close and the application of glue will enable it to slide in, but it's still a long way off fitting. It's maybe not a bad sign that it's a tight fit, at least it means that I've got the uh, fuselage joined nice and tight. But even so, this is quite a lot of plastic to be removing to get these to fit. Okay, so the back's gone in now. Not a stellar fit, is it? This rear tab is just fouling at the back. I'll just take a fraction off the back. It might just enable it to slot in a bit better. I think that's probably as close as I'm going to get it. Um, the gap 
varies along its length slightly wider on the starboard side but that'll fill in I'm not too bothered about that so it, it certainly makes you work this kit it's not uh, dropping together so just coming back to this filler let's just see if uh, this is dried up now it should be all right As I said I'm not going to worry about this uh, filler here at the front so uh, a lot of that will come off when we come to fit the nose section okay we've got some uh, strange gaps here shown up by the filler so I'm not sure what's going on here whether or not that's glue that's seeped out and just altered the surface but the rest of it on this side is a sink mark these areas here and here are also sink marks and this section here down towards the front of the fuselage is a sink we've got a sink here on this side but the extent of it isn't clear yet because I've not taken away this filler yet uh, until I've got the whole nose section fitted. I've got a couple of, they're probably too small to see, you might just see there very faintly. Uh, that's a gouge uh, here and here. Uh, I'm not sure whether that was in the moulding originally or whether or not it's something that I've done. I might have dropped something on it. Uh, just to cause those gouges but uh, they're filled in as well what I'm going to do now I'm still a bit worried about this uh, fill here it looks a bit strange to me I'm not it looks smooth when I hold it up to the light but the only way of checking it is to uh, give it a very light dusting with some Mr. Surfacer uh, just to see what's going on there and the surfacer will also reveal whether or not I've caught the rest of the seam line. So I can reinstate these panel lines and just see what this whole section looks like under a very light coat of primer. For curved uh, panel lines like this going over a curved section I like to just use a saw. This is a curved edge saw and it's possible just to run it along the panel line that you already have and aimed towards where you want it to meet up on the other side. The other thing you could do is just put some Dymo tape or some thick tape along here as well just to make sure that you get a straight line but it's easy enough to aim the knife blade along towards the uh, other line that you're aiming for. And if you do it from both sides it's easier to make sure that it's all going to match up. You could also use a scriber like this. This is an Alpha cutter. Uh, but I find it harder to get the tool to run along these lines. It's much easier with uh, this knife blade. It's more delicate. And I think you've just got more control with it. Just a quick brush to make sure we've got the debris out of there. I just want to check what's going on here under a very light coat of primer and that'll tell us whether or not uh, we've got any more work to do in that area. I'll also, while I've got the primer out in this vicinity, I'm going to just check what the air brake panels look like on this top wing as well.
All right, I'm going to let that dry, uh, see where we've got to go from there. I think we're probably just about there. These air brakes need a little bit more work just to equalise the gaps. Uh, just a smear of filler in there, just to make sure that they all look nice and neat. These on the port side are good. I'm going to leave those as they are. They'll look fine under a coat of paint. So the area here that I was concerned about, I couldn't work out what was going on. It was all sorts of different colours. Uh, bits of plastic and probably glue that was uh, dried on there. But anyway, the primer has shown that the joint is good. So uh, I'll just rub that down when it's perfectly dry. I'll leave it for a good few hours. Uh, just sand that down and polish it up and we should be good to go get the uh, wings fitted together. I've also just test fitted where I had sinks at the back. I'd previously put some uh, painted Mr. Surfacer on there and rubbed it down but just a spray coat of Mr. Surface has just shown that they're nice and smooth now the sinks have disappeared. So uh, I'll just put that to one side, leave it for a couple of hours and then uh, come back to it see what else we've got to do. This Mr. Surface has dried off now. This area will get another coat of primer uh, when it's time to prime the whole model when the airframe's finished. Uh, this is just to check whether or not the work I've done on this spine area is going to hide all the gaps and joints and all these horrible sink marks go down a grade. I don't want to scratch this now and that other stick was a bit coarse. I think it was a f I think it was a 200, a worn 200 stick, but it was a little bit too coarse. This is a very worn 400. You can see here we've also got some sink marks which the Mr. Surfacer has filled. Uh, and they're again caused by this thick moulding here underneath where the air brakes fit. So that peculiar pattern's come back but it's not... When it's painted over it's perfectly smooth. It just looks as though there's a real problem there but... Uh, there isn't. The Mr. Surfacer showed us that. Okay, so I'm happy enough with that for the time being. It'll uh, probably need a little bit more work. I need to do some more on these air brakes, uh, particularly these starboard ones. But uh, I think it's time to just check what else we need to do uh, and get these wing panels glued together. Just before we check the wings, uh, I've fitted the uh, fin top, the one that we need with the warning radar in it and now I just want to make sure that the rudder will fit as well so I'm going to assemble the rudder and I'll probably fit it at uh, this stage. It's in two halves That's going to need a bit of filling at the back as well. Just uh, run down the join at the back. There's no reason I don't think why I can't glue that. I can sort the seam out uh, later. Yeah, I'll fix that in place I think. I think I'd just a touch too much in there. Make sure it's uh, in the neutral position and then I'll just put a bit of extra thin quick setting in as well. I'll clean these sprue gates up obviously when I do the overall clean up. 
but uh, I'll just put that to one side and let it set. Okay, so the only thing I need to do now is to fit the landing lights, the transparencies for the landing lights. Again, these are numbered differently, but I can't believe that they won't fit into either wing. Before I glue these into position, I just want to run around the locations for them with just this black Sharpie pen. This is a brilliant tip that I picked up from Nigel at uh, Nigel's modeling bench. And it just prevents any reflection uh, coming through the clear parts. And it's a brilliant tip, so thanks for that, Nigel. And I'll also go around the light itself. So that just prevents any light reflecting through the clear part from the outside and getting that silvering effect that you sometimes get on transparencies on models, which spoils the effect really. It worked a treat on the uh, bomb aimers window when I did the nose section. I'll just glue that in on the tab at the back. Don't want to run all the way around with it. I'm just going to put some bare metal foil on the back of these. So that's the first one done. These lights are a very snug fit. You can hear it then just uh, clips in. So I'm just going to use some uh, of the new chrome bare metal foil. So placed behind the transparency, you get that reflection back and makes it look like a the back of a lamp lens. The problem with that is that obviously we've got to uh, just glue this foil into place. So all I'll do is tack it with a tiny bit of uh, thick CA. Try not to get it too close to the transparency. That's nice. I'll have to mask that off later on. The next thing to do before uh, fitting the upper wing panels is to put the Bombay cross members in. You remember we built these uh, way back in the series. And with these I just want again to get a good fixing on them. So I'll just clear the paint away. When this is all assembled, I'll probably just go in and put a little bit of filler uh, on the inside faces, all the joining faces of these. I might, I might not, depends what they come out like. Just get a clamp across that. I'll do these one at a time. I want to be careful with these not to get too much cement in. I don't want it spilling out onto the paint surfaces. Put the clamp on first and then glue it. That'd be easier. I'll leave these overnight just to make sure that they're completely set. Got the last one to squeeze in and this one it's important to get it the right way around. Airfix have numbered the bulkheads that we fitted together. So just uh, we need to just pay attention to that numbering. Well that looks quite a contraption but I'm just keen to get the uh, Bombay bulkheads uh, pulled together in the right position. So hopefully we're going to leave that overnight to set and hopefully when we come back we can remove the clamps and get the top wing panels uh, into place. 
Okay, well, uh, hopefully these Bombay cross members will have glued up properly now. They've been drying overnight. So uh, let's just check the fit. They go in there nicely. Everything appears to be lining up. There's a bit of work to do here and there with some filler, but uh, it should be all right. Seams on the intakes will be pretty good, I think, if we get them glued in properly. I'm happy with that. I'll glue that together now, I think. I can do any work uh, that I need to do in the Bombay from the underside. Again, I'll be using my favourite contact a professional to get a good bond along these wing joints. There's a lot of it to do. I'll probably tackle it half by half. Just before I do, I've noticed that I didn't clean off the paint from this top uh, intake. I did the starboard one, but not the port one. Okay, so ready to go. I think I'll be able to glue this one half at a time. There's enough play in the upper wing panel to get the needle of the contactor in to do the other side once I've glued the first. So I'll start with the port side. And I'm also going to glue the spars that we fitted. So I've got quite a bit on there. Nothing at the front yet. I can get that in later on. This is the key join here that I want to get right because I don't want to be doing too much sanding on these intakes. On the trailing edge I can just get some pegs on. There's a large step here on the uh, outboard side of the wing which isn't going to work, that's going to need some filling to get that right. So just keep an eye on this join here. I'll just get some extra thin quick setting just at the front and I'm just going to have to hold that for a bit because uh, taping it's not going to do any good. It'll just push the tape away. But the joint just the the upper wing panel just wants to push away a little bit just here at the front where the splitter is located. I've test fitted these splitters so uh, these parts and they're not a brilliant fit they're going to need uh, some work with them and again the one side is a lot better than the other this side uh, the port side uh, just needs a bit of filling really but the starboard side uh, as we'll see probably in the next part doesn't fit very well at all uh, so it's a peculiarity really that i'm coming across with the kit that uh, some parts on one side of the fuselage fit perfectly well and the other side the fit's not so good so i can get in now to do the starboard side the difficulty is getting onto the spar but there's just enough room reaching in there we've got the step on the outboard join as well on the starboard side don't want to forget these 
locations here. Just inboard of the engine exhausts. And again they're creating a large step. It's probably worse than the uh, wing tip. The last thing to do is to join the front of the nose section is that tab along the front to glue in place. Just a last check on the intakes. So I'm going to leave that alone now for at least a couple of days to make sure that that glue's fully set. Uh, then the next step will be to come back, sort the wingtip steps out and the steps on the tail fillet. Uh, then we'll look at uh, getting the nose fitted and the fin. So probably we'll be uh, getting a fairly complete airframe by that stage. Okay, so that's all the assembly unclamped uh, and the joints have held up pretty well. It's stayed together nicely. I'm going to leave the tape on uh, for another day just to make sure that this join at the front of the intake doesn't come apart. I've had a quick look at the nose assembly. So this is the nose which we did uh, right back in part one a few weeks ago. Uh, and it's not a bad fit. And I hear myself saying it's not a bad fit with this kit quite a lot. That's because quite a lot of it needs uh, a bit of work to, to do on it. Uh, and this nose will need some blending in. There's no doubt about that. But it doesn't look insurmountable. Uh, and I'll also be assembling and filling these uh, splitter plates that go on the front end of the intakes. So look uh, for that one coming up early next week. Uh, but in the meantime, everybody... Look after yourselves, stay safe, enjoy your building, uh, and I'll see you in another few days for the Vulcan build. Bye for now.